Greetings, guest. Welcome to the patriarchy, where we explore cinema classics fueled by predictive Hollywood programming and unpack how our favorite characters in cinema got egg all over their faces. I am your commentator, Dom, and tonight we're unpacking the character of Harley Quinn. So for this video, we are doing something different and I hope that the DC comic fans don't tear me to shreds for this, but we need to talk about the character of Harley Quinn, specifically Birds of Prey Harley Quinn. I was watching this last night and I was inspired to overanalyze this character and her backstory. So we'll talk about character development, plot points, why it's just so on par with patriarchy to write her like this, and what could be improved about her being and her backstory. So Birds of Prey, if you haven't seen it, it's on Tubi and Tubi is free, so you can go watch it there. But the movie starts off with this cute animation about Harley Quinn's backstory. And this is important because from a very young age, she's been disappointed by men. But self-narrated present-day Harley Quinn is talking about her past. When she was a kid, her father didn't want her and basically pawned her off multiple times and just wanted nothing to do with her. But despite this unstable upbringing, she manages to go to college, graduate with a PhD, and worked hard and was hyper-focused on her career as a psychiatrist. And then she met the Joker. So it's important to note how heavy the focus is on men and being let down by men in this very short introduction. I mean, we aren't even two minutes into the movie yet, but what we've learned so far is that her dad abandoned her and she gets her heart broken over and over again as an adult, so she focuses on her career. Then she meets the guy who would cause this very normal, responsible, and successful woman who literally pulled herself up by her own bootstraps to make something of herself despite her upbringing. He causes her to completely implode and morph into this crazy and beloved Harley Quinn that we know today. So this is a classic tale of a woman falling for the quote unquote bad boy. The Chad. It's so prevalent in media that women love bad men. They always go for the bad guys. And that's why guys think this. It's because it's hyper present in the entertainment that we consume. But in real life, who is attracted to that kind of chaos past the age of 25? I mean, come on. So Harley Quinn goes on to tell us how she fell so hard and how she lost the sense of who she was and how she elevated his game and was the brains behind a lot of the mayhem that the Joker was causing. And then he took all of the credit, of course, and then dumps her after completely using her up and destroying her. It's a tale as old as time. So this is my particular problem with the way that this character is written in this particular story. I know that Harley Quinn shows up in a lot of other DC films, but I haven't seen all of them, so we're only talking about this one. During her breakup, she narrates that she's okay, but she's clearly not, as if letting a man completely change her in the process of being with him wasn't enough. She allows him to continue to affect her by her constant self-loathing, butchering her hair, the binge eating and the binge drinking her feelings away, and, you know, all in all just remaining stuck as a byproduct of him. So she pretends to be okay, but she isn't. And why is that? The writers have written this story so that she's dependent on him, and by him I mean the Joker, for her survival. She doesn't tell people about the breakup right away because she has it in her head that the Joker is her protection. People don't fuck with her because they know that that's his girl. And when it does get out that they broke up, the idea that his protection is no longer there is further enforced when we see these scummy men trying to take advantage of her simply because she's not under his protection anymore. It's open season on her. And let's pause to talk about how this same notion translates in the real world and how we're led to believe as women, we're led to believe that we should strongly desire marriage. Why? One of the reasons told to us is because there is a certain spiritual and physical covering that comes with being under a man. 
We are led to believe that men are here to provide and protect. Now, I don't know where that notion, provide and protect, originated from, but the rhetoric is rampant. And the protection from who slash what exactly? Well, it's not other women. It's not children or dogs or bears. It's globally known that their protection is needed against other men. They are the threat. So are you seeing the reinforcement of this narrative in the entertainment that we consume? The irony is that there's not one single man in the film that protects her, or any of the other women for that matter. Not even sweet, old, harmless Doc, the guy who owns the restaurant that she's sleeping above. He sells her out for a payout. And while on the topic of protection, I love how all the women, although they don't even like each other, come together to protect this little girl, Cassandra, and each other from the men that wish to do them harm. So who are the real protectors? That's some bad behavior. Nice job, DC. So back to Harley Quinn, she completely spirals. Like she puts on this tough exterior and persona like this heartbreak isn't affecting her but has a very introspective moment and vulnerable moment when she overhears her friends talking about the breakup. I also want to pause here to remind ourselves that Harley Quinn is an adult, and she has a doctorate degree, had a great career, and when she meets this man, she reverts back to a childlike state. The clothes, the pigtails, the self-deprecating tattoos, even the way that she talks. I handled it real mature, but Mr. J was super broke up about it. In fact, one of her signature looks is literally her being dressed up as a jester. Do we all know what a jester is? Its definition is literally being a professional fool or a buffoon at medieval courts. So Harley's a fool for the Joker. Her character literally truncates herself into a childlike state for the Joker. All things women do often under the patriarchy. But back to the movie, Harley thinks, and the key word is thinks, that she's giving herself closure by committing a felony and completely destroying a privately owned chemical plant. But she's not, and this is evident by her being on the verge of tears nearly every time she talks about this breakup. This entire film is about women trying to emancipate themselves from men. It gives women's empowerment, but it's clear that Harley Quinn still has an attachment to him, even in the end. I mean, look at her appearance, look at the way she acts. Even at the end of the film, it doesn't give new identity. It still gives Joker's chick, just with a kid and a dog now. Okay, it's actually not a dog. That's a hyena and a laughing hyena. So that still further proves the point that she's not clearly over him. The way for Harley Quinn to actually quote unquote emancipate herself from the Joker is by returning or becoming a better version of who she was before he ever even stepped foot into her life, which is a crazy smart psychiatrist who uses her wit and intelligence for good, not by continuing to immerse herself deeper and deeper into taking on his attributes which is conjuring mayhem and chaos. Or if that's how she generally liked being, if that's truly her spirit, her superpower could have easily been blending back into society and raising hell at night while going undetected in the day. But where have we seen that before? Okay, that's pretty boring. So let's try and rewrite Harley Quinn's backstory so that she isn't so male identified. What if Harley Quinn's backstory was, wasn't centered around being hypnotized or stigmatized by the Joker? What if it brewed from the contempt of going into hundreds of thousands of dollars of student loan debt to get her PhD only to find that her job doesn't pay enough to pay back all those loans so she becomes a vigilante against corporate America, Fannie Mae, and the government? I mean, that is relatable. Or what if her backstory does stem from her broken relationship with her father, but every male patient that she has, she intentionally makes them crazier just to f*** with them, increasingly keeping all of the men tied up in a psych ward forever, thus unable to cause further disruption in the world? What about that? I touched on this earlier, but I just wanted to reiterate the one thing that I love about this film is the community of women and how they look out for each other. The relationship that she develops with Cassandra was so endearing. Um, So to wrap this up, yes, Harley Quinn is amazing. 
Yet, there are so many other ways in which she could have become the anti-establishment, but because of and over a guy, I feel like that was just lazy work. Anyways, what are your thoughts on Harley Quinn and her quote-unquote emancipation? I always love reading your comments, and if you've made it this far, please like, share, and subscribe for more. Signing off now, your friend, Dom.